Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problem number one, um, which is in part one of our limits component of calculus A, B, B, C. This problem corresponds to problem two of the 2008 AP Calc multiple choice um, release test item. So let's take a look at um, the question. We are to find the limit as x approaches zero of um, this expression right here. Now, when evaluating limits, first thing you want to do is you want to attempt to evaluate the limit by direct substitution. Okay, so if we um, evaluate this limit by direct substitution, what do you notice happening here? So we have 2x to the sixth plus 6x to the third divided by 4x to the fifth plus 3x to the third. If we evaluate this by direct substitution, we're going to have 0, 0, 0, 0, end up with 0 over 0. So does this mean that the limit is non-existent? The answer is no. Okay, you cannot automatically assume that it's non-existent when you end up with um, 0 over 0, which is a, an undefined expression. What we know for a certainty is that there is some form of discontinuity at x equals zero. If it's a point or removable discontinuity, then the limit will still exist because the left and the right hand limits exist even though the value of the function is undefined, okay? But if it's an infinite discontinuity, then the limit will not exist in that case. Um, it's not going to be a finite limit. So how do we determine if the discontinuity is removable or not, we'll simply factor this expression and see if we can remove or cancel out that discontinuity, okay? So let's go ahead and factor out the GCF from the numerator and the denominator. So let's say we have the limit as x approaches zero. In the numerator, I can factor out 2x to the third. If you're looking for a GCF, you basically extract um, the variables and you take the minimum of the um, exponents, okay, that's going to be the GCF, so x to the third, and then what do we have left here? We have x to the, now remember when you multiply an exponent, you, you add the powers, right? So when you're dividing, you subtract 3 minus 6, that's 3, plus, if you take out 2 from 6, you have 3, and then this is x to the 0, which is just 1. All right, so that goes the numerator, factored out. The same procedure for the denominator. The GCF here, the minimum of 5 and 3 is 3, so you pull out x to the third, and you're left with 4x. You subtract 3 from 5, x squared. And you divide and you subtract exponents. And then plus 3x to the 0. x to the 0 is just 1, so we have it just like this. Okay, now let's see. Oh, you notice these two divide out, okay? So if you divide this, divide that, there goes your uh, discontinuity. It turns out that that discontinuity, when x to the third, say that equal to zero and so, you have x equals zero. So we have a removable discontinuity at x equals zero, okay? So the limit could still exist because, um, uh, discontinuity at a point doesn't imply the non-existence of the limit. The limit still exists at a point discontinuity, okay? All right, now, so this becomes, <clears throat> in fact, rather 2, 2 times the limit as x approaches 0 of x to the third plus 3 divided by 4x squared plus 3. Now, we can evaluate by direct substitution without running into any complications. So we're going to have 2 times, plug in 0 here and here, you have 0 over 0. So um, we're going to end up with um, 0. Let me just show you the steps, plus 3 over 0 plus 3. Okay, and then this is over 1, and then this entire expression is just 3 over 3, so we have 2 over 1 times 3 over 3, which is just, just divides out to 1. Final answer is 2. Okay? So that's the value of your 
of your limit. So anytime you end up with zero in the denominator, you, you, you don't wanna want to be in a haste to conclude that um, the limit is non-existent. You wanna exhaust your, your um, options first. 